So in this video, we're going to talk about the requirements for both the source Windows vCenter server, some database requirements, and then the destination requirements to complete a successful migration. So let's take a look at the source requirements first. So we support migrating a Windows vCenter server or SSO slash PSE 5.5 or 6.0 to a vCenter server appliance 6.5. We require a single static IPv4 NIC. If you do have a multi-homed Windows vCenter server, the Migration Assistant will detect which IP address maps to the FQDN and only that IP address will be migrated. We require that the certificates are valid in that they have the correct FQDN and IP address for the source Windows vCenter server and that they're not expired. Forward and reverse DNS is a must for any environment and when performing a migration, this is the same. We require that the clocks between an external SSO or external PSE and the vCenter are in sync. The source machine should not contain any other software other than the VM or vCenter server or PSE software. If, for example, it also contains SRM, Horizon View, or any other software that you may want to continue using, you should move that software off the Windows vCenter server first because the vCenter server will be shut down as part of the migration process. So any other applications that you, you need to use will also be shut down. We require the Windows administrator credentials for the machine and also the vSphere administrator credentials so that we can log into the vSphere environment and export the data. Now for the database requirements, we support migrating any of the supported databases. So as long as you're running a supported vSphere 5.5 or 6.0 environment, we support that migration. But it's also good to perform some vCenter database maintenance prior to doing a migration. So two common tasks that we would re recommend performing would be to rebuild the indexes, and you can do that by following KB article 2009918 and purging some old data to reduce the overall size of the data and speed up the migration process. And you can do that by following KB1025914. Now moving on to the destination requirements. So we need a, a deployment target, and this is typically an ESXi host. If you're running the vCenter in another management cluster, you, uh, you could use the vCenter of that cluster as a deployment target, but typically we would just point directly to the ESXi host. Forward and reverse DNS is also applicable for the destination. The deployment topology is going to be retained when you're doing the migration. So for example, if you're running a vCenter with an external PSC on Windows, your appliance topology is going to be the exact same. It's going to be a vCenter server appliance with an external PSC appliance. The topology can't be changed during the migration. The vCenter database will be migrated to an embedded vPostgres database. So this holds through if you're running with an external Oracle or external Microsoft SQL database. The vCenter server appliance 6.5 only supports the embedded vPostgres database. Time synchronicity is also important as well for the destination. And we also require AD dom domain credentials. So this is to allow the target vCenter server appliance, the new vCenter server appliance to join the Active Directory domain. So in the next section, we're going to talk about the migration workflow. I hope you enjoyed this video on the requirements.